So if Jesus was a perfect man, why was it necessary for him to be tempted? Number one. As we, as we delve deeply into the temptations, you are going to see that there are three basic principles that constituted the ground upon which this temptation was facilitated. And it is on these three basic principles that Satan will try your life. It's on, this, on the basis of these three uh, principles that Satan will, will, through temptation, will reveal if your desire is for God, or your desire is for the age, or your desire is for the flesh, or your desire is for sin, or your desire is for Satan. So a temptation is an exposition. It's not necessarily too bad. It's just uh, an exposition. And God will not stop Satan from tempting you because there are positive things that temptation brings out. It's an exposition. Are you there? Okay, so why was it needful for Jesus to undergo temptation? Number one. Before Jesus could begin his ministry, he had to be brought to the wilderness to confront man's arch enemy. There was a need for Jesus to be in open confrontation with the enemy of humankind. And the reason was because in the form in which Jesus was manifested, he decided to subject himself to the normal processes of human birth so that in every way, he could be considered human. In order for him to sustain the status of human, there was a great price that he had to pay. And the price he had to pay was that he had to suspend his omni qualities. He was omnipotent when he had his ecclesiastical body. He was omniscient when he had his ecclesiastical body. He, he, was, he was omnipresent when he had his ecclesiastical body. So the only qualities were tied to his frame. The Greek word for it is morphe. You need to be a chemist like myself to understand the meaning of morphe. The meaning is only in chemistry. I don't know how to explain it. To That's like the structure of a compound. Ah, you know it's a little chemistry. That's like the structure of a compound. And if you, if you change, remove a hydrogen atom from that structure, it's no longer that structure. So he had a kind of structure that was all peculiar to the frame of reference called eternity. And he had to do away with that structure in order for him to put on the morphe of a human and his attendant troubles that is associated with it. The moment he put on the morphe of a human and he allowed himself to be born like a human and he no longer had access to his omni powers, if he wants to operate in power, he will operate in power to the degree to which the Holy Spirit is willing to make power available to him. And that's the way you are. Are you there? So he was dependent on the Holy Ghost for insight, for knowledge, for grace, for ability. That sacrifice that he made was to qualify him as man in all senses. And because he was now man, he will have to confront the enemy of man. That which is peculiar to man will be peculiar to him. And uh, the enemy of man will also visit with him. It is interesting to know that Satan has a calendar of visitation for every human being. And Satan is in great hatred of the fact that you are human. As a human, you have a spirit. As a human, you have a body. And because you have a body, you can legitimately function in this natural realm of space, of time, and of matter. Because you have a spirit, you can legitimately operate in the spirit realm, the unseen realm. Because you have a spirit. Your spirit, realm, your spirit being, your spirit side, is calibrated to operate in the spirit realm. So when God moves, it's your spirit that he, he targets. The Bible says that God is spirit, and they that worship him, shall worship him in spirit and in truthfulness, in spirit and in reality. It means that worship can be accomplished in your spirit man because God is spirit. Your worship of him will be achieved in spirit. Your spirit is calibrated in such a way that it can operate in the realm of God. You there? And in all the creatures of God, it is only man that has this capacity to operate legitimately in the two realms. He has the wiring that affords him the privilege to function 
in the two realms. Now, if if I teach you, you're not with me. I can teach you how to find the resources that are available in God through your spirit. And then you access these resources with the organ called your spirit. And uh, you can adapt those resources and use it to influence your life in natural. It is only man that has that capacity. All right? Now, because of the capacity that man has, if he plugs into God, he will have access to the resources that are domiciled in the realm of the divine supernatural. You are not following? Okay, now, this is my phone. This is a Samsung phone. And it must be known that I'm not a marketer for Samsung. Now, when you buy this phone, there are some things that this phone is capable of, even without the SIM card. You can store music in its storage, and then you play the music like a radio. And there are many other functions. You can, there's a calculator on it, because there's a software that, uh, you know, that is installed in it, that can give you that function. All of those things can happen without a SIM card. The phone is localized as long as it has no SIM card. The moment you insert a SIM card, the SIM card has the ability to take advantage of the GSM network. So the phone has access to a realm. And the realm that the phone can manage is a realm that the network makes available. So it is no longer a local device. It's a device that can manipulate all the abilities of the realm that the SIM card brings into it. Are you, are you there? And so the day you gave your life to Christ, the SIM card of the Holy Ghost was inserted into your spirit man. And that the, everywhere the network that is occasioned by the Holy Ghost is available, which is the realm of God, that SIM card gives you access to that realm. You see, you have not changed your location, but you have access to the vast resources that find expression in the realm of God. And you can take advantage of the resources in that realm and use it to influence your life in the natural. And I'm saying that only man in the entire enterprise of creation has that capacity, that capability. Only man legitimately can operate in the realm of the spirit. Legitimately can operate in the realm of the natural. That means he can take advantage of all that is available in heaven and use it to reinforce his purpose here on earth. It's a dangerous piece. And so um, Satan pays attention to him. So when Jesus decided to be numbered among men, so much so that his only qualities were suspended, Satan <laughs> had to pay him a visit. So it was only logical that he has come into that realm where Satan can confront him. Are you there? Now, surprisingly, if we check the account of Hib um, Matthew chapter 4, there's something I would like you to see quickly. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It was not Satan that came to look for Jesus. It was Jesus that went to look for Satan. We are still talking. There is a deep matter. The deep, this matter I'm about to raise this night has been in my spirit for like two weeks. I'm just praying for the utterance to communicate the mind of God. It has been in my spirit for like two weeks. I was looking for where to preach it. If I come for a certain meeting and I check the density of God's presence there, no, this is not the place. I will give them something else. I went somewhere else again. I was trying to deliver it. So it was in this meeting that the Lord said, okay, that's my message. You can, start, you can try me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted. It, Jesus went to the place of temptation in search of Satan. You, you have never sought for Satan before. It's Satan that comes into your bedroom. He comes into your sitting room. He, he appears in your office. Ah, all kinds of things. But Jesus went in search of Satan because that was how the Spirit of God led him. There was a need for you to meet Satan. The second reason why he had to be tempted was because he was operating in the capacity of Adam. The first Adam came in contact with Satan. And you know what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 3. If we have time, we're going to look at that. It will interest you to know that Satan was the original guardian of this province called Earth. He was the first guardian of this realm. Are you there? Yes, sir. 
If you have ever read the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, you'll find that he was the first warden of this dimension. It was because of his failures. He failed. And he failed woefully. And the woeful failure that he made was what got God angry and God moved in vengeance and judgment. And it is that vengeance and judgment that led to the flood that you saw in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Do you still remember the days of Noah? God was angry. How did he exercise his judgment in view of the anger? That scenario that you find in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 that the Bible speaks about darkness covering the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was moving over the face of the waters. That's not the beginning of this existence called earth. And how do I know this? Are you with me? Yes. Do you remember the charge that God gave Adam in the garden? He said, be fruitful. Uh-huh. Multiply. Uh-huh. Huh? Replenish. Replenish. Now, now, why did he use the, the, the prefix re? Redeem. Do you know what redeem means? Buy back. It means something was sold out. Revive. Bring back to life. It means something died. Replenish. Repopulate. Because the population is gone. And just in case you, that is not a strong case, strong enough case for you. After the flood of Noah, Noah was given the same charge that Adam was given. And you will still find the same word there, replenish. I, I don't have time. I don't have time today. Maybe next time. Then we can enter into a few things. Then you will understand what we are talking about. So he was the warden that was in charge of this frame of reference called earth. And then when he messed up, the judgment that came upon him was that he was cast out of heaven and he was going to the underworld, what you call hell. So the, the earth is in the middle of the heavens and the underworld. And that's not on the basis of the geography that you studied in school. That's spiritual geography. According to the Bible, heaven is above. We don't know where above is. You are not with me. Because if we are going by the law of gravity and uh, where South Africa is positioned, the, the direction South Africans will be pointing as above, it will be different from the direction we will be pointing. So you can't understand it by geography. It's, it is spiritual. So, so in that spiritual context, heaven is considered to be where? To be above. And... Uh, Hell is considered to be beneath. And meanwhile, the beneath also is not the spiritual geography. Now, so the sentence that came on Lucifer was that he was cast into hell. And unfortunately for us, this realm called earth is in the middle. So in keeping, that judgment was a process. In keeping with the judgment, he was displaced from the realms above. And then he now came into the middle. Before... Are you there? And that middle plane is the area that he exercised guardianship over. But what God did was that he now introduced man after the reconstruction. I don't have much time, so I can't say many things here. I can't prove it because there's no time. After the reconstruction, he now added another creative day, which he did not add before, which is the sixth day. And in this creative day that he added, he now made man. He gave man a capacity that he never gave any creation of his. He never gave angels because angels are spirits. So Lucifer is a spirit. And because Lucifer is a spirit, he will need permission from a creature that has a body of earth to be able to come into our space. He needs permission. What we call prayer is actually earthly permission for heavenly interference. Priesthood is the gateway that allows spirits legitimacy to operate in this dimension. So Satan knows the potential of man. And because of that, he visits each and every one of us to know who among God is beginning to understand his capacity. Because what was happening in the Garden of Eden, that God was coming to visit with Adam, was that he was coming for education. The same way you take your children to school. Are you there? Yes. You are not there. You know what I do whenever I notice? Let me look for what we'll cut from this. Yeah. Adam, unfortunately, 
was created an adult. He was not given the opportunity to grow like this, my young brother. What's your name? What? Huh? That's it. Okay, that name, that name he called. He wasn't given an opportunity to grow like my friend here. Adam was created like me. So you might see him moving around with biceps in the garden. He was just three months old. He was, he was, he was, a, he was a big man, a small man in a big body. So even though he was big, he was actually, he has the mind. Hey, anybody with a little child here? Okay, the children are not here. The children are in an So he was actually a child. And God was coming to educate him. And that was why God came to him in the cool of the day. And it's on the strength of this that God also has a calendar for every man. Just like Satan has a calendar for every man. When God comes, he comes to instruct, he comes to build capacity, he comes to educate. So that you will understand the powers and the wiring that he has made available to you to be able to exercise guardianship in the earth and take over the position that Satan occupied previously. So Satan comes to visit every human being. So when Jesus decided that he would become man, a schedule of his station too was open for him. But the thing about his own encounter with Jesus was that Jesus did not wait for Satan to come for him. Jesus went to look for Satan. For the Bible reveals that he was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It was him that went to look for the fight. Not that the fight came to him. You've been running from Satan for the past 12 years and he's, 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 he's everywhere in your house. He's in your ceiling fan. He's, he's operating the heater. Ah, yeah. Koba Santoria. It was Jesus that went in search of Satan. And you know what? When he went in search of Satan, the platform of engagement was the wilderness. And Jesus arrived in the wilderness before Satan showed up. 